he didn't know about it. He called over his people. He's got 10 people standing behind him. Everyone is central casting. Central casting. <laughs> glasses, 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 glasses. I'm Presbyterian. Boy, that's down the middle of the road, folks, in all fairness. I mean, Seventh-day Adventist, I don't know about. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ballgame. I like to do the right thing where I don't have to actually ask for forgiveness. When we go in church and, and when I drink my little wine, which is about the only wine I drink, and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. And I do that as often as possible because I feel cleansed. Have my little cracker, have my little cracker. Have my little cracker. I, I eat the cracker. If I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. I can understand the evangelicals to a certain extent saying, well, maybe he's not as nice as we want him to be, but they also want to see the country be great. Why do you think those voters are drawn to you? Well, I'm Protestant, I'm Presbyterian, which means something. You know, I said the other day, and it sort of played pretty well, that is my second, help her over here. Help her over here. That is my, give me that book. I said it the other night, my second favorite book of all time. What's my first favorite book? The Bible. The Bible. And it sort of played pretty well. I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was... And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took off her and she, I moved on her like a bitch. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. What's my first favorite book? The Bible! Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal, so I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into. There's no, no verse I, that I, means I a just, lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Nobody knows the system better than me. Nobody knows politicians better than I do. Nobody knows. Nobody's better. Nobody's stronger. There's nobody bigger or better at the military than I am. I love the First Amendment. Nobody know, loves it better than me. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ballgame. There is nobody that respects women more than I do. I moved in her like a bitch. <laughs> nobody builds walls better than me. Nobody's in the history of this country has ever known so much about infrastructure as Donald Trump. Nobody knows debt better than me. Nobody even understands it but me. Nobody can do it like me. Which is why I alone can fix it. I have Ivy League education, smart guy. I know words, I have the best words. I mean, like, I'm a smart person. It's this, it's not my salesmanship. It's what? This, you know what that is? It's the brain power. I'm getting thousands of letters and tweets that I was right about the whole situation. I mean, I've been right about a lot of things, frankly. I should be a newscaster because I called it before the news. I watch this stuff. You know, I'm like a guy with vision. I have an instinct for this kind of thing. I'm good at war. I've had a lot of wars of my own. I'm really good at war. In my book, I predicted terrorism. It's a rigged system. I think I've done a great service by pointing this out. I was the one that really broke the glass ceiling on behalf of women. I think I'm doing the military a great favor. Did a great job in Texas, a great job in Florida. I truly believe that the first 100 days of my administration has been just about the most successful in our country's history. It looked like a million, a million and a half people. Thank you, everybody. What a crowd, what a turnout. I understand steaks. It's my favorite food, and these are the best. Was this a good vote? The best. The best vote of How am I doing? Am I doing? Okay, I'm president. Hey, I'm president. Can you believe it? You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it, but this is locker room talk. For the record, though, are you saying that what you said on that bus 11 years ago, that you did not actually 
kiss women without consent or grope women without consent. I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. So for the record, said, you're saying you've never did that. things that, frankly, you, you hear these things are said. And I was embarrassed by it, but I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever and done those things? have respect for me. And I will tell you, no, I have not. Look, I hate to do it, but I will do it. I would give myself an A+. Plus. Is that enough? Can I go higher? I can be the most presidential person ever. We had the biggest audience in the history of inaugural speeches. The labor leaders that came out, one of them said it was the single greatest meeting I've ever had with anybody. It's the highlight of my life. Here's a picture of the crowd. Now, the audience was the biggest ever. That speech was a home run. It was the biggest standing ovation since Peyton Manning had won the Super Bowl. And they said it was equal. One thing this shows is how far over they go here. Look, look how far this is. This goes all the way down here, all the way down. They said it was one of the great speeches. They showed the people applauding and screaming. I've had a wonderful life and wonderful success. People loved it. They loved it. They gave me a standing ovation for a long period of time. When you look at this tremendous sea of love, I call it a sea of love. I, I eat the cracker. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I thought, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. That reporter he is talking about is Serge Kovaleski, who now works for the New York Times. As you can see right there, he suffers from a chronic condition that impairs movement of his arms. Principalities cannot control this man because he surrounds himself with Christians. He is a Christian. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So right now, let every demonic network that has aligned itself against the purpose, against the calling of President Trump, let it be broken, let it be torn down in the name of Jesus. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. We begin to deal with things. We deal with every demonic attack against him, against his mantle, against his purpose, against his position. As he stands in position as president. We declare every demonic network to be scattered right now. We declare right now that there is a hedge of protection over our president, first lady, every assignment, the purpose they carry in the mantle. And the Supreme Court justices, if we get two more, come on, if we get yeah. two more. And right now, I know right now, we are scaring the literal hell out of demonic spirits That's by me right. saying yeah. this right now. And I do not permit a woman to teach. I now come into a priestly anointing. So I now can Say walk. that again because I they don't get it. I now come into a priestly anointing. Jesus is not the only begotten on. Son of God. He is not. I'm a son of he's God. He's the first fruit. If you've, you're the, he's the first fruit. He's the first born of many. Okay. Jesus is not the only begotten on. Son of God. He is not. When I go into the dry cleaner, that dry cleaning place becomes holy. I have every right and authority to declare the White House as holy ground because I was standing there and where I stand is holy. I believe that the Godhead resides within oneself. Most importantly, I brought my Bible. Okay? And is Donald Trump basically the king of Israel? So that's how a radio host referred to the president today. And Trump quoted his remarks in a series of tweets this morning. The president thanking Wayne Allen Root for calling him, quote, the greatest president for Jews and Israel, and also for saying that, quote, they love him, Trump, like he's the second coming of God. Place yourself in the shoes of a Christian who decides to retweet someone else having referred to them as the second coming of Christ without pointing out the absurdity of such a statement. Interesting times, folks. I know, though. He's cleaning up Washington, right?